Hey guys, Coach Brady Krause. Uh, got a cool one for you today. I'm going to be talking about the art of fainting, right? The 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 boxing it, boxing done well is, is, is the theater of the unexpected, the art of deception, and, and that's what fainting is. So I'm going to go over a little bit of, of what fainting is and a cool drill to help you get better at it. So fainting is is and, and you faint in, in multiple sports, not just in boxing, but fainting is a way to deceive your opponent into a commitment. But not just not just that, a commitment that you can anticipate. Something that you you know they're gonna do. And you think that's like that's like having a crystal ball and being able to peer into the into the future. And if you know what they're gonna do before they do, you can really use that to your advantage, right? Let's say I was boxing with Christian and I was throwing the jab. And let's say he was going for the, the parry technique to defend it. So do that for me. And he's parrying, right? And I've seen this, and I know it, okay. Every time I jab, he's going for this technique. And now, knowing that that's the way he's going to defend, I can pretend like I'm going to throw that jab, get him to come to the parry, and come out for the hook around the side. Because he overcommitted. He committed to something that wasn't going to really happen, right? Let's say I was throwing a jab to his body. He was defending with his elbows. He's defending with his elbows, right? I can do that same thing and come out here with this shot, trying to get him to overcommit to one thing or the other, all right? You have to be somewhat of an actor. You have to sell this technique though, right? So that, that first instance where I saw him parrying, right? So maybe the fight starts and I see him doing it, I see him starting to overcommit, and I don't even do anything about it additionally. I let him keep having this false success. I get him to think, oh man, Brandon, Coach Brandon can't hit me with anything, man. I, I, I defend this jab, no problem. I want him to have this false sense of security, so when I finally do spring my trap, it works to the max, all right? So sometimes, and you, you know, not so much in amateur fights, but definitely in pro fights, you'll see a good fighter set these, these feints up six, eight, ten rounds before they take advantage of it. You know, you, 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 you sometimes you're watching boxing and all of a sudden in round eight, round nine, one dude just get, eats one and, and gets put down. It's not like the other guy lucked out. It's that he finally sprung that trap that he had been setting up the whole time, all right? So I have a cool drill that, that helps, helps my fighters with this technique and experiment, right? And how it's gonna work is I'm gonna be throwing the jab at Christian, right? I am gonna really be trying to hit him with the jab. He's gonna be defending. But he's got to be careful because at some point, I'm going to faint that jab and see if I can get him to overcommit and score a shot because of that overcommitment, all right? So let's do that, Christian. Okay, so, all right, I did that. I got the faint. I tried to come out of position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch, and I'm going to be the one defending. But now I have to be careful because he's going to be trying to set me into a trap. Oh, very nice, very nice, thank you. There's a lead left uppercut, and referee has stopped this fight. Throw the punches. Yeah, throw the punches. Oh, down he goes again. So what I'm having, like you see these fighters in the ring, I have them go through all six of my punches, one round each. So one round of the jab, one round of the straight right, the left hook, the right hook, the left uppercut, the right uppercut, and having them experiment with, with what is going to get their opponent to be fainted out of position. And that's kind of the beauty and the misery of boxing also because what works for one opponent isn't going to necessarily work for an another opponent. And it's kind of on that boxer's intuition to to see what is necessary to get them to get them out of position, right? But what is true throughout all that is when you are trying to get a guy out of position, you always want to elect to do as little as possible to get them to fall for the faint. So, you know, if if, if fainting the jab to here gets the same response as doing this, I'd pick the smaller one, right? Because that's less of a commitment myself, all right? Anyways, have fun with this drill. Study it, right? And this is why this is why you can neutralize a taller opponent, a faster opponent, a stronger opponent because of techniques like this. Uh, 
Keep check it out. Like and subscribe.